Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You are welcome to the day two of this meet day prayer with ACNN. Once again, you are welcome in God's presence in Jesus' name. Thank God that God has helped you. You have left your house to your place of work. Some of you are in your office. Some of you are in your business center. Some of you are still relaxing at home. Wherever you are, you are welcome to God's presence this midday in the name of Victoria Jesus. Before we move into the prayer and the word of God, we have for today, I want us to appreciate him, to give him praise because he's faithful. Casting crown, lifting hands, Bowing half is all we've come to do. Casting crown, lifting hands, bowing half is all we've come to do. Adonai, 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 Adonai. Adonai, Adonai, you reign, you reign, you reign on high. We will rise, we will rise in your name, in your name. Adonai, Adonai, you reign, you reign, you reign on high. We will rise, we will rise in your name. Aha, uh -huh. Adonai, Adonai, you reign on high. Oh. Yes, you are the Lord. Libra ah. Dados, most I. Yes, you are the Lord. Most. Yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are the Lord. Ibra Malado Zila Dabola Most I. Yes, you are the Lord. Most I. The Lord. Blessed be the rock. Libra Dabos. Let the rock of my salvation be exalted. The Lord Blessed be the rock. Let the rock of my salvation be exalted. Amen. Once again, you are highly welcome to this midday prayer with ACNN. My earnest prayer and desire that as you are seat connected, as you are seat ready, the Lord will visit you and the Lord will touch you and do something great in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Today is the second day of this midday prayer. And by his grace, we've been considering the theme so far for a while. And we're looking at our key tests in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. The word of God said there, but the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. <laughs> The word of God says, after ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, established, strengthened, and also settle you. So, the settlement, the strengthening, the establishment, the perfect will only come after. You have suffered a while. Yesterday, by his grace, we base, we station on the theme, which is suffer for a while. 
But today, by his grace, we are going to look into another subtopic. And the topic we're going to look at today says, why does God allow the righteous to suffer? Why does God allow the righteous to suffer? You know, the question is a very striking question to some people. They say, ah, why does the God allow the righteous to suffer? Quickly, there are some few points we are going to be looking at on this topic. The number one point we are going to look at there says, he has a loving reason for everything he does. He has a loving reason for everything he does. Number two point says, said, suffering is often God's loving chastisement. Suffering is always God's loving chastisement. The number three point there is also says, God's, God's chastisement are righteous. That's the chastisement, the chastisement of God are righteous. He chastises us because he loves us. He chastises us because he wants us. Looking at our text we're going to back up with, that he has a loving reason for everything he does. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, the word of God says, as we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Not only that he just loves God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Get that. Not just you only love, but you were called according to his purpose. That means you are not called according to your own purpose or according to your own plan. You are not called according to your own father's purpose or your father's plan. Or your mother's purpose or your mother's plan. Or your husband's purpose or husband's plan. Or your wife's purpose or your, or your children or your father or your mother's purpose. But you are called according to his purpose. So, if you are called according to his purpose, then get ready. There are every tendency for you to suffer for a while. All these are the things that complement the flowing of Christ. All these are things that follow up, carry your cross and follow me. But if you are not ready to carry your cross and follow him, then this is not for you. But if you are ready to promote Jesus Christ to promote righteousness, to promote holiness in that your office, then this is for you. Why he, does God allow righteous to suffer? He allows us to suffer because it's a part of his chastisement to us. It's a part of cooking us. It's a part of preparing us. Today, many of us are running away, shining away from suffering from affliction now how then will you be able to cope how then will you be able to make it as i said yesterday in the one of this book i made us understand that we are cooking or preparing indoming christians five minutes noodles people that are not ready to chew bone people that are not ready to crack bone people that are still contented with drinking milk even one year, two years, three years, five years in the law, ten years in the law, we are still drinking milk. What an error. If you were of the earthly father and a baby that was born after six months, after one year, after two years, after three years, after four years, he's still drinking milk, breast milk, and not eating bone, eating correct food, then even you as a father will not be happy. Then what about our heavenly father to us? Remember, he paid a price we owe we could not pay. His own son, Jesus Christ, died for us. He paid a price we could not pay. Then, if he, who knows how to give good gifts, who gave his only begotten son, is indeed our God, will he not see us through? There is no suffering we pass through. There is no experiences you pass through. There is no persecution you pass through in life that God, it's not a way and it cannot bring you out. Sometimes he allows it to know truly if we love him or not. Let us cite some examples this afternoon and see some of the areas. Now, the number one thing we are looking at is he has a loving reason for everything he does. And in that we have read 
the Romans 8, verse 28, where he says that all things work together. To them that love him, who are called according to his purpose. All things work together. Now, in Genesis chapter 45, if you read first 5 through 8, we saw again the brothers of Joseph. They made his suffering. They sold him unto slave. And they thought that, ah, we have suffered him. Let us see how this dream will come to pass. Remember, in Genesis chapter 37, he dreamed dream. He told them all his dream. He told them everything. And the Bible says, after he, loved, he dreamed the second one, and the Bible says, and they hated him the more. And when his father sent him to go and visit them, they said, look at the dream are coming. Let us kill him and see how the dream will come to pass. Now they sold him to the Ishmaelites. Merchandise. And Ishmaelites went to Egypt and sold him to Potiphar. And we know the story. How everything about the house of Potiphar began to prosper. Remember, this is a man that saw dream of greatness. This is a man that dreamed dream of what God is about to do in his life. But before you know it, he began to pass through the university of suffering. He passed through the university of suffering. He passed through the university of suffering where God was busy teaching him, cooking him, so that by the time he ascend to the throne of prime minister of Egypt, it will not enter his head. He will not begin to mismanage things. He will not begin to mess up things. Reason why many of us are messing up opportunity that was given to us by God. By his mercy and grace, it's because many of us have not experienced all this suffering. And even we have suffered a while, understand the things. Why God wants us to pass through those areas. We'll be able to connect, we'll be able to carry everybody along. But today, many of us are misbehaving an opportunity given to them. Why? Because we have not yet suffered a while. So we are looking at why does God allow his the righteous to suffer? He allowed the righteous to suffer because he wants to prepare the righteous. He wants to cook the righteous and bring out the righteous to a better man, to a better woman, to a better boy, to a better girl. And that's what we saw in the life of Joseph. In where I quoted in Genesis chapter 45, verse 5 to 8. He said to them, be not grieved. I'm just quoting Be not grieved that you sold me as a slave. For God did send me before you. To preserve life. That's what God did. We are talking about why does God allow the righteous to suffer? So he allowed him to suffer so that he will bring out the best out of him. Remember, in Genesis chapter 39, there is an opportunity for him to stop this suffering. But the question is, if he had allowed that, would he reach to that goal? But Joseph understand this. He's a disciplined boy. He's a boy that has the fear of God. He said to the evil woman that come as a tempter, I will not do this wickedness against my God and my master. For he has handed over everything in this house unto me. But you, he did not hand over to me. And I will not commit. But some of us could have said, ah, or oh, God wife has uh, advanced to me now. Ah, it's an opportunity. Let me begin to lie with your God's wife. So that you, you will now have a shortcut. Child of God, let me clear you now. Let me shock you. Every shortcut will always bring you to a shame court. Hey, hey, there is only a hard way, the only way. And that hard way, the only way, is the only way of the truth. It's the only way that will lead you to the place of betterness. So it's better we follow that hard way. It's better we pass through that hard way. That will bring us to the place of honor and glory in God, in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. So Joseph said to his brethren, they should not be troubled because they meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And we want to appreciate God because I know many of us are beginning to understand that thing we are looking at. Suffer for a while. It is important that we suffer for a while. It is important that we understand these principles of God. Why does God allow the righteous to suffer? The next one we are looking at says, suffering is often God's loving chastisement. In Proverbs 3, verse, 12, verse 3, chapter 3, verse 11 to 12, 
He said, whom he loved, he chastised. Whom that he loved, the Lord loved, not anybody. He chastised. <laughs> so he chastised you because he loves you. Whom he loved, he corrected. Whom he loved, he corrected. In Hebrew 12, 3 to 12, he says that whom he, the Lord loved, he chastised. But in Proverbs 3, verse 11 to 12, he talks about whom he loved, he corrected. So God is correcting us through those areas. God is chastising us through to bring us at a better Christian, a better child. That anywhere we find ourselves, we will represent him fully well. My earnest prayer is that the good Lord will help us. As we hear the word and be doers of it, may the blessings of God, the added joy and no sorrow, be our portion in the name of eternal Jesus. Now the last point again we're going to look at there says, God chastisement are righteous. In Psalm 119 verse 75, he said, I know that thy judgment are right and that thou in faithfulness has afflicted me. The psalmist understand that the judgment of God is righteous and his faithfulness, <laughs> not in wickedness, but in faithfulness, that means in love. He has afflicted him. And that affliction has repackaged his mindset. That affliction has rearranged him. He has given him a better orient orientation on whom he is, whom he was in God. But today, many of us are shying away from suffering. We see that anybody that is suffering, any child of God that is suffering, ah, hey, 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 he's a sinner. Is this? No. We saw it in the life of Job. How God was confidently addressing the Satan. I know my son Job. A man that loved the Lord and he chewed evil. <laughs> and, Job, and Satan said, have you not blessed him? Build a hedge. Eh? Build a hedge over him. Made him the richest man among the people of the East. So well, take away all these things and it will cost you. God not understand what he was saying. But when Job began to pass through that suffering, because there is a need for us to pass through it. The Bible says Job did not sin against God. He honored the Lord and worshipped him. He said, God has bring and God has taken away. Praise God. That is a man that understands God. That is a man that understands that anything he has, anything he sees in life is of God. Many of us today are so holding precious of those things we have, those materialism. That is why when persecution comes, we begin to run away. Well, God does, what does allow persecution and suffering to come to his children to cook them and bring them up to a better one. My earnest prayer is that as we have heard this word, and as we are going to pray, and we begin to walk by the word of God, no matter the level of suffering you find yourself, as long as you are not suffering as evil doer. Remember one of the texts we read yesterday in 1 Peter chapter, 12, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 4, from verse 12 down to verse 17, where we stop. He made us, he warned us, we should not suffer as an evil doer. We should not suffer as a murderer. We should not suffer. Ah, uh, we should not suffer as a busybody in other man's matter. But when you suffer as a Christian, happy are ye. Because there is a blessing, there is a glory that awaits you. Shall we pray? Let's give God thanks, let's give God thanks, let's celebrate him, let's appreciate him, he's faithful. Give him praise, give him praise, give him thanks. Give him thanks. Oh, give him thanks, give him thanks for him alone is worthy of our praise and thanks. Celebrate this good God. Appreciate him. Maledo sanda la balagadoza. Lepedo shagada lebedegede zele legede baradabanda. In Taranya mo jamba le dagoza pande legedoaja. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Just open your mouth. Begin to thank him for his word that have come. Why does God allow the righteous to suffer? Thank him for his word. Thank him for his word that have come. Give him praise. Celebrate him. Return back all glory to him. In Jesus mighty name. We are afraid. Now begin to ask the Lord for that grace again. Let it release that grace upon you. Let it release that grace upon you. Let it release that grace upon you. Let it give that grace upon you to live for him and for him alone. To serve him in spirit and in truth. To obey him at all times. 
No matter what that comes your way, no matter what that you experience in life, as long as it's in line with the purpose and plan of God for your life, asking for that grace, that enabling power, that you will pass through with joy and gladness, so that that glory that awaits you will come to pass in your life. Ask him that he open your eyes and lighten the eyes of your spirit, that will begin to understand more of his word, more of his word. Ask him for more of understanding of his word, more of the revelation of his word, more of insight of his word, so that we're able to understand what he's saying in the now. Ask him for that, ask him for that grace, ask him for that enabling power, ask him for that endowment from on high. Thank you, Father, because you are great king. Be thou magnified. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Quickly, we are going to pray for these diocese on this day of our midday prayer. Number one, we are going to pray for Sabungida Ora. Then we are going to pray for diocese of Umbo and diocese of Obumosho. Let's open our mouth and begin to thank God for these dioceses. Thank God for the great work he's doing in their lives, starting from the Lord Bishop and the House of Clergy and all the laity, the parishioners. Just begin to thank God for all that they have been doing in all these dioceses. Dioceses, dioceses of Sawum, Gida, Ora, Dioceses of Mbo, and Dioceses of Abomosho. Let's give God thanks and praise. Begin to demand for God's intervention upon these dioceses. More greater grace and greater unction upon the Lord Bishop and all the house of clergy and the house of laity. Let God begin to do great things in the diocese of Sabungira, Ora, and also the diocese of Mbo, the diocese of Bomosho. Let God begin to do great things upon them. Let the desires of God be made manifest. Let their heart desire be granted unto them. Let God begin to do a new thing upon these dioceses. Let God begin to lift them up. Lift them up. Let there be peace in these dioceses. Let there be God's visitation in these dioceses. Let there be blessings of God in these dioceses. Let God turn around every ugly situation in these dioceses. Let God announce these dioceses. Begin to depopulate the kingdoms of darkness in these dioceses and begin to populate his own kingdom in these dioceses. May he use them as a vessel of honor to do greater and mightier things in these dioceses. May the love of God, may the peace of God, may continue to run and reign in this diocese to the glory of the name of our God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because we know you've answered us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Father, I want to thank you for all these dioceses. Lord, we ask that your grace will be sufficient enough upon the Lord Bishop and all the house of clergy and all the house of laity. Lord, continue to increase them, continue to empower them, continue to endure them from on high, that you make these dioceses greater dioceses. The diocese of Sabun, Gida Ora, diocese of Umbo, and diocese of Umbo, Lord, do a new thing upon these dioceses and take all the glory at the end in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because you are great God. I want to thank God for you that have listened to all this day, that have joined us in this midday prayer. My earnest prayer that good God will grant you your heart desire. I speak for healing upon your life. I speak for healing in your business, healing in your spiritual life, in your prayer life. May God continue to protect and preserve your salvation. Salvation of your soul in the name of Victoria Jesus. May God continue to keep you. May God continue to protect you. May God continue to preserve you. Now and forever in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. See you the same time, the same station. Remember place. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.